All right, let's do a quick little review on basic music theory. So let's come back over to my whiteboard. I'm just gonna review a couple of terms, beats, bars, and phrases, right? Um, now, bars are how many beats? Good, four beats. And a phrase is how many bars? Four bars, yep. Remember that four is always what we're looking for. Four bars is also equal to 16 beats though, right? And we, uh, a beat is a head nod. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and write this out again. Three, four, four, two, three, four. So this is our phrase, right? This is one phrase, four bars, 16 beats. Okay, just want to make sure we're speaking the same language because we're about to get into song structure and breaking down the song. So it's really important that we're using the, the uh, correct terminology here. All right, so before we do that though, let's start to talk about um, different parts of a song. So I'm gonna write down a couple parts of a song like intro. Right? What else might be another part of a song? Uh, maybe the verse, right? The verse is the story part. Um, how about the chorus? Right? So the chorus is the part that repeats itself. It's usually typically the the song title of the song is typically also the chorus, right? And the course happens multiple times throughout the song. It's also the part that most people know and would sing along to. It's like the anticipated part of the song. More on that in just a minute. We might have a bridge, right? And then we may or may not have an outro. So these are like our five basic parts of a song. We may also have like a pre-chorus. So like a, a section that happens before the chorus that feels like uh, anticipation for the chorus. This may also repeat itself as well, but you might have a chorus without a pre-chorus also. So that's not something that is in every song. Um, and then I wanna use some other terms that you might see in like electronic dance music, right? Uh, some of those genres. So you might have something like a, that's very similar to the chorus, called the drop. Again, it's like anticipated part. You might also have a build, which is very similar to like our pre-chorus, right? Um, and then you might have some sort of a breakdown, which could be very similar to our bridge. Right, so I just wanna get some terminology out of the way. Um, you also might have a section of the song that you're not even sure what it is. And as we go through and try to figure out this song, we're gonna use one of our demo songs here. And as we go through and figure that out, um, I want you to watch as I map this out. So I have this technique called mapping out the song and we're gonna map it out. Before I start mapping though, let me just kind of give you an overview of what we're trying to achieve. So um, I like to refer to this as the anatomy of the mix. I know it sounds very official, the anatomy of the mix. Uh, Verse likes to call this ATM. All right, so here we go. So if I had a song that was playing, I've got another song that's coming in. For a period of time, I've actually got two songs playing over each other, right? So um, the question is, what part of the song is this and what part of the, the song is that? Well, typically in our anatomy of the mix, like sort of our, our most fundamental mix would be, this would be the chorus and this would be the intro. So I'd be layering an intro underneath the chorus. Um, hopefully the idea is, because I need to know the length of these. So let's say that this chorus was eight bars. Let's say that this intro was eight bars. If I start them at the same time, they'll play together. I'll be like fading this song up. And as the chorus ends, the intro also ends. And now I'm into this song, right? Like that's the idea. This is like, uh, another way to look at this would be like the, the box top of the puzzle. You know how like when you get a jigsaw puzzle and the box top is the picture? This is like the picture. This is what we're trying to achieve. So what we need to figure out is, let's assume that these are already within the same range BPM wise, right? So BPM within plus or minus four, check. Then the next thing I need to know is I need to know what is, how am I gonna get in, sorry, how am I gonna get in and how am I gonna get out? So where do I get in and where do I get out? And that's what I'm trying to figure out here. So I need to figure out how long is the chorus? How long is the first chorus? How long is the second chorus? 
Now, I'm going to figure out how long the verse is in this example that we're going to do, but the verse is not nearly as important for us because that wouldn't be a point to get out. Um, and in fact, actually, let me go one step further before we start mapping, and I'll show you sort of what maybe a basic song might look like in terms of the different parts, right? So I might have an intro into a chorus, into a verse, into a chorus, into another verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, outro. Maybe it looks something like that. Now, these are all going to be maybe different lengths also. Like this might be four bars, this might be eight bars, this might be 16 bars, this might be eight bars. The second verse might be 24 bars. The, second, the last chorus might be 16 bars. Uh, or that's not the last chorus, the chorus before the bridge. The bridge might be four bars. I'm just making up numbers right now. But this is what we need to figure out. So instead of just making it up, I need to be able to break down the song and figure out what those pieces are. So if I were going to change the song over, meaning we're listening to this song, and then now we're going to hear this other song, the song should change here, 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 maybe, here, and here. These would be the natural points to be able to switch the song over. Now, what do all of these things have in common? Well, they all happen after the chorus, you'll notice, right? Like it's right after the chorus in which I'm gonna change it over. So knowing the length of it is important so that I know when to start the track running under it. So I want to have this blend. Now why do we wanna have that? Well, because it'll help the listener anticipate that something is gonna change. And the reason why we're gonna change the song over at that very point here, at all these points that I've marked off, is because that's also the natural point of change inside of the song as it is. So when a producer builds a song, right, like I'm gonna build a song so that it goes like, uh, so that there's really noticeable differences between the section change. So like, and here's the chorus, and back to the verse, and here's the chorus, and to the bridge. Like, there's going to be this anticipated change and you're going to hear it here in a moment while I play the demo song. I feel like you'll be able to tell when that happens and we're going to use that. We're going to use that as a tool and as a moment to change the song over. All right. So I hope, I hope that sank in. I want to remind you that you can always pause these videos, go back and rewatch it. I just dropped a lot of knowledge and a lot of information on you. I mean, this is stuff that um, took me years to figure out on my own. And even then, didn't, really wasn't able to do it very well uh, initially. And so if you want to go back and rewatch this stuff, please take advantage of doing so. Um, if you're ready to move on, we're going to start mapping this song. All right, everybody. So now let's start to map this song out. We're going to use one of our demo tracks. We're going to use the song called Stranger. And before we start mapping, I want to show you something that you can do here. If I go over to my... Uh, my top left hand corner, it says two decks horizontal. I can drop this down and go to prepare. Now what this is going to do is it's just going to give me only one deck. And this is helpful so that I don't get confused, so that I don't get lost. Um, I like to use this mode sometimes uh, just so that there's less going on and I have more space on my screen. All right, so let's go ahead and just start. And what you'll notice is that I'm going to mark the one of every phrase. So every four bars, I'm going to mark a one. All right, so here we go. Um, and you'll pay attention to my whiteboard down here. Okay, so let's hit play. And one, two, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one. This is instrumental now, right? So there's no words here. Two, three, four, four, two, three, four, and one. This is a verse. And this is like a rap verse. One. Two. Three. Four, two, three, four, one. This is another verse. This is like a singing verse. And one. Notice I'm marking the one of every phrase, right? So you can hear anticipation. One. I need you now. This feels like it's coming up. So this would I imagine be like my pre-chorus here. There's another one there. Feel it coming up. 
and one, two, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, three, three, four, one. Four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one. Okay, so this is a little tricky section here. We'll talk about this in a little bit. Another rap version. M1. Two, three, four, two, three, four, one. Is that I need you? Again, this is like our pre-chorus. Feels like it's coming up. And one. Two. Three. Four, two, three, four, one. Two. Four, two, three, four, one. This is our bridge. And one. Four, two, three, four, and one. This technically is the vocals of the chorus, but it feels like it's coming up. And one. You like our chorus or like our drop. One. Four, two, three, four, one. I need your love, don't matter where you come from. I need your love, bring love, cause I need Acapella some money. Your love, don't matter where you come from. Stranger. One. You'll notice I'm still holding the beat. Four, two, three, four, out. Okay, cool. So, this was the entire song. And you can see it here. Right, let me see, let me get, uh, there we go. That's the entire song. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this song and we are going to now go back to our software inside of Juiced and we're gonna use our hot cues and use our hot cues to help separate out these different sections and use them kind of like bookmarks. Now I know that that was a lot that we did and I think that you were able to follow along of what I was doing, but if you wanna re-watch what we just did, feel free to hit pause, go back, rewind just a little bit to watch this again. Um, we're gonna now take what we've done on the map and interpret that into hot cues inside of the software.